have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Granted. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm glad you mentioned that so she didn't have to wait around for me. And with that accomplished, we are ready for Keith and Jeremy. Jeremy Duff of KJG Engineering. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. It has been brought to my attention from you guys that I've got interest in the fact that we're having a construction engineer company come in and do an assessment. I have reached out to KJG, to the courthouse, to come in and Jeremy met with me, kind of did a very vague overview. It was just way beyond my expertise and the estimate. Do you guys have them here somewhere? The estimate in front of you, there's three different types of estimates on there. And I'm going to let Jeremy touch on those estimates and stuff like that. Okay. Are there any questions? Sure, yeah. We tried to break them out and kind of give you an a la carte choice just to help explain. But my understanding from Keith's descriptions and a brief tour about a month ago that there's kind of a combination of concerns about potentially some structural movement and that's some cracking in the interior walls, which may or may not have anything to do with settlement. There may also be some concern just with the aging facade. And we run into that in a lot of historic buildings. They're starting to lose some pieces. So the structural portion that I've itemized for you would include, and I've kind of broken it out as interior and exterior. The interior would obviously focus on everything we can see inside, trying to figure out where there are cracks, what the cause of that might be, how active the movement could be. We've also been up in the attic during the brief tour and we've spent some time up in there around the dome area just making sure that everything's structurally sound there. Obviously summarize that in a report. Any report we make for any of these three items would include photographs, recommendations of what we believe the repair or further progress would be made along with a cost estimate. Obviously we would not be capable of making those repairs. We would be just giving an engineer's estimate for budgeting purposes of what you might want to start setting aside. The exterior structural that I've itemized for you would be us renting a boom lift or I know a decade ago when we did all the facade projects here, Delphi Body Works I believe lent the city a bucket truck and we used it to inspect all the facades. So I don't know if there's agreements for anything like that in town, but the cost of a lift rental is not included in that. But we would do a boom lift around all four sides of the building, checking for any loose facade and any other structural items that might show up when we're 30 feet in the air looking at it that aren't apparent from the ground. And then the other piece we itemize is probably a more difficult inspection than the structural really, and that's trying to identify where water infiltration may be coming in. We've seen some evidence in some interior walls where the plaster is kind of bubbling and peeling, so moisture is getting in somehow. So that's a little bit more of a tricky inspection, but it would also include a full perimeter inspection of the window sills. Some of those balconies that have a unique way of directing water away. So obviously the efficiency would be if you decide to do the exterior structural and envelope inspection at the same time, we could obviously do that the same days and use the same rental fee for the bucket at that time. We would have different personnel focusing on the structural portion versus the water portion, but they could do that and save some rental fee if you chose to do that. Other than that, that would be the only advantage to doing it all at once. So I kind of wanted to piece out just not knowing what urgency and budget was, but again, other than the lift rental, there would be really no other cost if you chose to piece it out separately. And we can certainly hold those prices for at least up to a year if it was something you didn't want to do now but wanted to look at. Well, Jeremy, I have a question about it. Sure. And I think you've answered it, but I haven't been able to grasp it. It says external structural inspection and report, $3,500. Building envelope inspection and report, $8,200. 
I've not in my own mind understand the difference between the exterior structure and building envelopes. Sure. So yeah, for the exterior structure, we would be focusing on uh, the actual pieces of the, most of the limestone facade, just checking to see if there's any corrosion. A lot of those pieces are have uh, steel parts embedded in them that adhere it to the structure. So we'd be looking for signs of any kind of movement in those pieces. Are any of them? I mean, we'll physically see if any of them are loose. Um, so the structural portion would not really touch the windows or any of the moisture protection. Uh, the other piece is where we have um, architects on our staff looking at the window sills, the caulking, the drainage, uh, the balcony, and really looking at how water is kept out of the building. So again, those two different people might be in the same bucket at the same time, but they'd be focusing on, on different elements. Um, so, thanks. One of the things you told me, Jeremy, uh, is that with if you move forward with any of these estimates, they will prioritize the list of repairs, correct? <coughs> sure. Yes. Um, <coughs> on knowing that you know budgets and everything else, they will prioritize what should be hit first and taken care of to get a result. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, you know, in, the structural uh, inspection is a little bit easier to do than the moisture obviously could uh, uncover some more life safety. Typically, leaks are not immediately going to cause any life safety issues, but could over time. So, uh, again, what Keith said, if we would prioritize in our report, hey, here are 20 things we recommend, but this is the order we would recommend you approaching them, uh, just from an important standpoint. So, well, it has to be 20 years since we moved into the dome. I would tell you, it's hard, I, I didn't know what to say, it's in our, in our cursory review, I did not stumble across anything structurally that I was immediately uh, concerned about. If I had, I would have shared that with you today. It doesn't mean there's not something working there, but even being up on the dome and around, I think a lot of the cracks you're seeing in here we're going to find uh, are either um, normal, moderate movement, nothing to be concerned about, or it could actually be water that is getting in there and causing cracks that appear to have a structural reasoning and they actually don't. So um, I'm hopeful the structural portion for the inside would yield a pretty, a pretty short list of concerns, but I mean, that's after just a couple hour tour um, so far. Um, the exterior one, hard to say. I know there have been repairs done that, but I would tell you our experience with buildings of this age, um, that, that exterior can take quite a beating through the winter and oftentimes there's not a great deal of for foreshadowing if there are pieces coming loose until until something actually starts to, to move. So um, I guess if you had to prioritize between the two structural, I would definitely recommend moving the exterior first. I think that could have the, uh, the most potential for issues more than the interior. So for you for for me to get the full mill deal we have to have all those three up together. Correct. So and again other than the shared lift rental, there's really no no, they're saving you if you chose to, to just move forward one at a time. So. Off the top of your head, those are animal crossings. You know? 14 2 is what those three are uh, looking to do. Yeah. I don't have a good number on the uh, rental. We would anticipate probably two day mm -hmm. um, until I would anticipate five to eight hundred dollars um, to have that delivered if there wasn't any city, county, or uh, you know, donated equipment that we could use and save that.
Management Committee, we were, uh, the question came up of the, the uh, load-bearing capacity of the balconies mm -hmm. around out here. I've never seen it. I have no idea what they were holding. And I reviewed all the blueprints, even the original blue ones, and the load capacity is not listed on them. Yeah. I would be happy to take a look at those, and we could, if information's readable on there, we should be able to come up with pretty, I think it's probably a repetitive construction, so it wouldn't take much for us to come up with an estimate. We have to make some assumptions on what the concrete strength may have been at, at that time, and reinforcing steel is a lower grade than what we use today, but we've done that in the past. Uh, I wouldn't anticipate any, any concerns. On current code, we require 100 pounds a square foot when we have public gathering space, which is a significant load, but uh, based on what I've seen, the, the guts of the structure, I would not anticipate any concerns with that unless we saw some deterioration or something that had been damaged previously. Uh, and really, without the blueprints, when you're dealing with concrete construction, there's nothing to see unless you unless you know what steel went in there. Uh, structural steel construction is a little bit easier. If we can see it, touch it, measure it, uh, the concrete, if it's in good shape and not showing the rebar, it's, it's difficult. So if, if the information is readable on there, that would be something we could do for a uh, well, part of this. What, what do you gentlemen think that we have them do that for the doctor tomorrow? But, well, I mean, we, we missed this whole series of hearings and trials. On, it's going to go on for a long time here. I mean, we're going to have big crowds of different kinds of people. I'm going to need to pour over the drawings as part of this anyway, so I'd be happy to look at those and, and do a check for you. If I find that somehow it's not repetitive and it's going to take a, you know, a huge amount of time, I would let you know. This year's money, and it will not affect the hundred thousand we have going in next year. Wonderful. Okay. Now that has to be approved. The encumbrance. Yeah. Everybody on board with everything? Yeah. A motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We will. I will sign these right now. Thank you, gentlemen. How many copies? Typically, typically adults standing shoulder to shoulder, I mean, in a crowd is 40 to 50 pounds per square foot, typically. Um, so that's better. Code, the current code requiring 100 is just as a complete, you know, safety factor of two, just because you don't want an event of emergency to have any concerns. So I would, I would 
We would be surprised if we don't find, if we find the information on the original drawings, but we don't find it's, it's more than that. It's typically found puzzled structures like this were overbuilt and overdesigned, if anything, in the early part of last century. Also, right. Yeah. And again, unless there's been something that's been changed, damaged, yeah. uh, along the way. Sign we'll have it all set. <laughs> Construction. Good morning. Good morning. Quincy sends his regards from uh, Mexico. Uh -huh. Yeah, spelling things. <laughs> Enjoying the sunshine, I guess. You should learn how to vacation during this nice weather we have here. Ah, it's beautiful outside. Why would you want to be here? <laughs> uh, a couple things just to give an update on where we are with the progress on the jail. Um, we uh, have received. Uh, Few weeks ago, the, the final construction documents from LBOX. Our team has been going through those documents, um, putting together uh, RFIs, requests for information, uh, getting some questions out. We've sent those to uh, subcontractors. Um, a large amount of subcontractors have received them. Our current timeline is um, that internally we would be receiving bids from subcontractors on December 8th. And then it takes about a week for us to scrub through subcontractors and make sure we have everything and the right numbers, um, and put that all together into a nice package um, that we call our GMP, which will include the price, um, the schedule, any other scope clarifications. Um, we're set to have that done by the 15th of December, and so uh, and, and ready to present um, to. County. Um, one of the questions I have is how do we want to present that? Um, I believe you guys have a council meeting on the 15th. It's the third Thursday is the council meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want us to present to the council prior to presenting um, in this forum. Your meeting is the 19th here. Mm -hmm. um, so we have we have options there, um, but Could ultimately. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind coming up here, it's, but it's every question gets heard by everybody. Yeah, it's clarified. Everybody's on the same page. And, um, we have had problems with not being on the same page, and so everything we can do to make sure everybody gets the same information at the same time mm -hmm. has an opportunity to ask the same questions in front of everybody. Good. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think Steve made an excellent. Suggestion there. Uh, what do you think, Lauren? At 19? Uh, 1 o'clock, maybe? 1 
130? Okay. 130 on the 19th. I will, I will tell you that I did ask the uh, council at the last meeting about resetting the ARCA joint meeting. Uh, yes. And they had thought about December 5th at 1 o'clock or the 15th at 1 o'clock. So I'm just, I'm just throwing those out. I mean, I know you said uh, the 5th would not work, but the 15th you would be ready or would you rather have uh, the We're going to be done. Um, we could probably make the 15th work in the afternoon to, to present it. Yeah, we have a meeting that would cover both things. Well, it'll be a long meeting. Day. It would be. Shoot for the 19th at 1:30, unless we hear otherwise, um, and we'll present um, the GMP. Um, one of the questions, and um, I don't know, Quincy and I have talked about it. I think you may have, have asked uh, the scope that I believe the RDC is doing for extending the utilities to the site. That's currently not a part of our our blueprints um, that we're pricing for the jail. But my understanding is the same civil engineer that did that did the jail design did that. Um, do you want us to speak to the RDC and try to get that information so that we can provide a price for that and include it within the GMP? We can separate it as an alternate, or um, is there other plans for that being being done? Um, I don't know if there's other uh, bidding requirements or other things that need to be done that the box statute doesn't allow um, based on how we have it. Mm -hmm. that? The, the utility extensions that, um, that are required to the site, water and sewer, well, storm. All that I have heard, and, and I have, <coughs> was unable to attend this last week because the doctor was on Yeah, we yeah that we right now our our documents that we are pricing show us extending on within the, the footprint of the jail site. Um, we're we're going to the property line and tying into these utilities. So if they're there, we have the tie-in. My question is, how are they getting there? Who's who's ultimately going to do that? Is that the water, um, water okay, sanitary. So you sign uh, a construct just construct a water main and strike extension last meeting so I know that's been done okay um, the sanitary sewer construction permit that's been done permits or or it said bids for um, we received notice that it had been sent off uh, to from Greg, Greg so he's he's probably submitted for permitting um, which is fine my question would be who's who's constructing it how does that how does that work? I don't know that part. Because when I talked to Greg previously, it's, it's been a, a, a week or two. Um, the design was still kind of being finalized, but where that's being built um, was to be determined. So, I just knew there was something It's easier for us to do it, just because it's all done and coordinated, and it's there when you want it. It doesn't have to be. It's not a problem for us to coordinate with somebody else. Yes. I do, too. you got one person involved in the I will get, 
I'll reach out to Greg and get the information, and then um, we'll we'll start pricing it with our with our with the jail um, and break it out separate, and then we can determine how we need yeah, it. Yeah, because we're getting that. assistance on that part of it. Yeah. Okay. I'll uh, I'll get with them. And Greg, we got a question here. Um, having Problem to do with that. Here. Uh, I know RDC hasn't really seen any numbers, but the other question that came up is where are we at on the easements for trying to run it down the south side of, what is it, 100, yeah. which is what we're looking at. Because funds with the RDC, with some of the latest things we're seeing, we've got a lot of people wanting some major dollars from the RDC. and we can't fund everything. So we need to know, <clears throat> we need to see some numbers, but you know, nobody even knows where the right of way is at. Where are we on that, Chad? <clears throat> We're still working on it. The, uh, I'm reaching out to an attorney from Minneapolis. He has his stuff. He's got three condemnations in the uh, circuit court here. And we're still trying to get that wrapped up here as soon as possible. I don't, I don't have any more information. Nobody's told me that there's been any change in the easement. Uh, is there going to be a change in the easement? No, I don't think so. Okay, because I, I haven't, I didn't gather that from Greg, from what Greg said to us. So. Yeah, I didn't either. Uh, so, I would anticipate being, whatever it is that we have worked on, yeah. that's what we're going to have to work with. That's what, what I've been given, yeah. I want to make sure that case, I, I need to talk to Greg, because I wasn't here at the meeting that Greg was presented, I don't think. Was that the setup? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't here at the setup. I, I, don't, I really don't think that he, he didn't come in, he just sent them he just for sent um, his signature. I, I'm going to call Greg, too. I'm okay. going to follow up on that. Okay, please. Okay? We'll get you an answer on that. Worst case, we'll get the documents and we'll have a price for that so you'd have numbers um, by the 19th. And we'll have that number sooner so I can send that separate to say, hey, here's, here's what we think the value of that work is. Um, so everybody can. Just redevelopment meeting in December, did they say? As far as I know, we're, it's on the 15th. So there, that's on the 15th at We would have that number. We would have that number that I can, I can give before that meeting. Send it to me. Okay, the last thing that I have from an update perspective, um, so our attorneys at Hall Render are working on BOT agreements to get a draft agreement that we can get to Ted and everybody to start circulating so that hopefully we get all the agreement language and everything worked out. So once we have the GMP and council and your board signs off on it, it just gets plugged in as an exhibit and you guys can execute the agreement. The, there was a few things, I believe Quincy sent an, an email back. Um, this last person documents yeah. and he needs to have those. Yes, so um, there was, a, I think it was back on the third where you guys had the committee recommended the board accept our proposal. Um, so we need minutes from that meeting and then um, the hearing that was held where we had been selected um, and the, the subsequent resolution awarding that project to us. Um, so the resolution and the minutes, I think that was all back in October. Um, and then the, the other question, um, I'll just read uh, what, was, what was asked for, the resolution of Board of Commissioners specifically adopting the provisions of Indiana Code 523. That was like back in April. Yeah, the resolution that was included appointed an RFP committee but didn't adopt the statute itself is what our attorneys have said. Is there a resolution that does this or do we, do you feel that referring to the 523 and to BOT is sufficient? Um, if that's what, if you feel that's a su sufficient, our attorneys are, are saying that um, it would be wise to, for you to give an opinion okay. to the board on that. Do they have what we did on the 20, back in April? 
I believe, I believe that's what we gave them, and this is their response to that. Okay. I've sent some to Quincy. I haven't sent all. He asked for some more. Okay. Um, okay. We'll follow up on that. Uh, we did everything according to you know hearing. And, uh, I don't know about the April yeah. thing. I, I can't remember what I sent him. The April <laughs> thing. Our our. We uh, adopted uh, uh, IC five twenty three. And uh, there was, I, I don't know, I don't know if it was the form of a resolution or if it was actually a, a motion, but I think it was in the form of an actual resolution. Okay. He does not have the resolution there. Then that's what we don't have. Okay, to show I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure there was a resolution because we had, <coughs> we had a document to go by. Okay. So that was in April. Yeah, if we could get that, and then it sounds pretty much like the resolution and the minutes from October 3rd, I think we have everything we need our attorneys can get that drafted. Um, there's just there's so many different little steps to that statute, and you, you know, you think everything's been done. We just want to make sure we get them so that it's they check the box, they file, and everybody has it, and it's it's, it's all done right. So, um, but yeah, if we could get that um, as soon as possible, then I'll try to get our attorneys to get that draft out. I would like them to get the draft circulated between with you and. Everybody's got a chance to look at it before we present on the 19th, just so we kind of get the language behind us. It's the, the attorney side of things. Um, that's all I have, update-wise. Any questions or needs? No, but I sure would for me, no more questions. But I sure appreciate you coming in. I like, we like to hear how we're coming along. The people like to hear about what's happening. It's coming along well. People are excited. Um, we've, we've had a lot of meetings with different contractors um, just to, to make sure they know it, uh, what's going on and what the expectations are. So we'll, uh, we'll be back on the 19th. And in the meantime, we'll get some agreements communicated back and forth. And um, looking forward to from getting to that point. So after that, if all goes well, we'll, we'll start running. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll take the, take the spot that was on Mondays that always met. And I have set aside Mondays and Tuesdays and usually Wednesdays for doing anything I have to do here in the county. Thursdays and Fridays is when I have blood tests, doctor appointments, chemo sessions, and all that stuff. I have not, I, then, then they moved the meeting to Thursdays because Josh couldn't be here on Mondays. So I'm, if anybody would like to take that spot, I would give it up. What time will be the evening? 1.30. Yeah, see that? So that's hard for me to get that. Uh, that's right. And it doesn't have to be one of us three. I enjoyed being on that committee because I've learned an awful lot, and, and I, uh, I, I like to uh, I like to know what's going on in that so I can report to you about it. But I wanted you to know that I have not lived up to everything I wanted to on. I haven't been there the last. Well, I've met two. 
Second, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Offices will be notified to put it up in their office. Okay, you're going to let us know what we need to do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, courthouse grounds application by the American Legion. Yes, good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. JT Doan, Community Development Director with the City of Delphi. Uh, yes, on the application, and then first I want to clarify your question earlier. We're coming up on the 167th festival. 167th, yes. I know it's been a couple of days. It, it, that, that it has clearly <laughs> quite the history. Um, so on the uh, application for the courthouse usage, uh, the Main Street's planning to do a Santa on the Square event. We plan to have Santa set up there on the gazebo. Uh, so we have some committee members that will be uh, decorating the gazebo. And so we plan to have Santa there on that 10th and 17th. And as of right now, Santa's schedule looks like between 11 and 2 on the 10th and 17th. And so we'll have Santa there on the square. Uh, we've got some, uh, uh, some candy canes, I know, uh, to include to give some of the, the children and adults, I guess, if they want to come give Santa their, uh, their wish list. But the Main Street will be working on that, the Promotions Committee. We'll be getting out some flyers, some information out on social media uh, to promote the event. Uh, but that is the uh, that is the current schedule. Did you file your insurance with that? I didn't. I forgot to look. Submit that to you. And that went. Yes. Discussions on you know, noting that to make sure nothing in the ground. Yeah. Did you get that check back? Yeah. 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 So I got a motion and a second on approval of this. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. Always nice to have you here. Likewise. Uh, 
Work one appointment. Did you do the other one? No, 4L sign on application of the American Legion of Number 17. I think it would be happy there. <laughs> Second to appoint Jake Adams to the work one committee. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Motion passed. Uh, extension contractual service agreement between Purdue University and Carroll County. That requires a signature here. Yeah, that's from your extension office. All you have to do is sign it. It's a we sign it every year. Yeah. Just two of them there to sign. So I need a, a motion. favor? Aye. Uh, you skipped over one here. What's that? You skipped one, the uh, joint meeting with council. the council for ARPA money. No, I skipped that. So what did we decide on that? Uh, if you want to, you can wait until after the holidays, as far as I'm concerned. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've got a lot of stuff going on, and uh, how about a motion to uh, take that? Motion to take that. All in favor? Aye. Okay, passed. Uh, now, uh, we're down to Camden Housing. I kind of blew this one. Uh, I got a call from uh, Andy Rogers. Right. 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 They have a house there in town that has right on, on the highway on Main Street and it's very dilapidated condition and they have gone through tax sale after tax sale and, and now the taxes are so high nobody's ever going to buy it and uh, he wanted us to do something about it and I know we have done something like that before of what were we you know they can apply and petition the board of commissioners to transfer it Town. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we have to take it first? They have to, they have to do a petition. I mean, really, what they want to do is do it. What they want is for us to go in and tear it down. Now, he never told me that. Uh, I, I told him that we had before on a, on a property like that. Now, I think it was before school. We took it and then we needed it 